everybody, even Steven here. Thanksgiving season is upon us, and what better way to celebrate Thanksgiving than with some good old-fashioned American football. In Mini Helmet Football, the game we're going to be looking at today, it is a dexterity game where you're going to try to score the most points against your opponents by flicking your helmets downfield, making passes, running, all of the things in football are here. Let's take a look. Mini Falmet football is played in this giant laminate playing mat, which you roll out and it takes up a whole 6 by 30 inch table for my table we're going to look at here. And the goal of the game is to score the most points over four possessions for each team, or four quarters, in which each team will get possession of the football once. When you have possession of the football, you're going to set up your offense with three linemen. You can have two wide receivers, you can even make a tight end. The defense can arrange their defensive backs in any order they wish. Then the offensive player will get one flick to flick one of any of their offensive players. Then the defense will get a flick to try to block that offensive player from getting the ball. And the offense could maybe flick out another receiver in this case. And the defense again would flick to try to defend them. And then the quarterback, which is three helmets back from the line of scrimmage, may move laterally along this line in any way to try to complete the pass to their receiver to gain yardage. So when you're flicking the receiver, you want to have one hand on the table and you want to make sure your finger is just going to flick the helmet forward. You're not going to flick it and make contact with a tick noise, but you're just going to rather push it towards your receiver. If this helmet would have touched this receiver, it would have been completed pass, and in this case it would have been a touchdown since he was in the end zone. At the start of the game, or after a team scores, this will result in a kickoff in which one team will kick the ball to the opposing team's receiver who will try to return the ball as far as they can. At this point, the kicking team will send two of their men down, flicking it as normal, trying to flick them downfield to block this runner from running the kick back. Then the kicking team will get to flick two of their blockers, in which they might try to knock the opponent's helmet out of the way to create some space for their receiver. The returning team may also defer and not take their two flicks as a strategy to maybe keep their blockers where they are. So then the kicking team would send down two more blockers. Now, this is a good example. If a helmet ever tumbles and rolls over during its flick, it is reset back to its original position facing backwards showing that it has already moved and it may not move again. Then the receiving team would again get two flicks. The kicking team would flick down their last two players. There is always one kicking player left, which is the kicker. Then the final two blockers on the opposing team may try to block to create some more room for this receiver. Remember, when you are rotating your helmet, you may rotate it to flick it in the direction that you choose. So I might try to flick it in the middle here. And then I might try to bump this player out of the way over here. Now, the returning player may return the kick, and he gets however far he flicks down the field as long as he stays upright and does not tumble. So I would try to probably flick it up in here as far as I can, and I got to about the 50 yard line. Then the opposing team must flick a helmet to tackle me, just like real football. So they would take their helmet, flick it. Once they make contact with me, I am down right there, and the Bills, in this case, the white helmet team will start their possession going this way. When you are running your plays of mini helmet football, you must always have three linemen on both sides, so this will always be the same. But the offense can then set up their formation for each of their plays. Now in mini helmet football, you only have four downs or four attempts to try to get to the end zone from wherever you begin your possession. If you fail after four downs to reach the end zone, or on fourth down, you may kick a field goal, which we're going to see in a little bit, to try to add points to your score. If you fail to score points after fourth down, the other team will get possession and move the opposite way. Now, when the offense is setting up, they may put out as many receivers as they want. They just need to make sure that they keep one quarterback, which is always three helmets back from the line of scrimmage. If they want to have their receivers here, they may do so. They may split one out. You may also have a tight end, which is kind of staggered off the line, which can also be flicked down as a receiver. Or you may have a running back in the backfield, which must be placed just outside the offensive lineman here. So I could have two, two running backs here. I could have a running back behind the quarterback and two wide receivers. And you can see the options that you're going to have on offense to set up your attack against the defense. 
And this is the same for the defensemen. So they again must have their three linemen here, but they could place their defensemen wherever. If they believe that the opponent is going to try the end zone, they might put all their defensemen back. They might play press coverage and play everyone towards the line of scrimmage if they think they are going to run. Once the two teams are set, the offense may choose to put a man in motion in which they can move any offensive helmet that is a attacking player, not one of the line of scrimmage linemen. He may move them anywhere on the board. So you might move this guy out as another wide receiver to surprise your defense, or you might rotate this wide receiver to the other side, or you may choose to just leave it how you had it before. Now, to start the play, the offense gets one flick then the defense will get one flick of a helmet then the offense will get another and the defense will get the final flick and then we will resolve the play now if you're going to try to go out for a pass you may flick one of your receivers so this receiver here this tight end or this receiver out for a pass so let's say i flick this player out towards the end zone there if an offensive player makes contact with a defensive player that is okay that is like him gaining position in a real game now, the defensive player will get a flick in which they're going to try to block that offensive player from getting the ball. Now, on a passing play, the QB, once he is passing, will rotate anywhere along this line of scrimmage line where he started three helmets back. So he can move laterally as far as he wants when he wants to pass. So the defensive player is going to keep that in mind and try to block this player from getting the ball by maybe flicking in front of him. So now the offensive player will get his second flick in which maybe he's going to set out his tight end here to try to gain position on this field to spread his receivers out. Now once again the defensive player will get their final flick. Now what a defensive player can also do is try to flick one of their linemen out to block the pass at the line of scrimmage. So maybe this defensive player wants to flick this lineman out into the line in which I just didn't hit too hard there but let's say I flicked once and it went like that now this blocks sort of this pass to this receiver but the QB might be able to sneak in here so now to resolve a pass play the quarterback will be able to move laterally along this line three miles back like I said and he's going to try to flick his player to connect with his receiver as long as his quarterback stays upright and does not tumble and he connects with his receiver it will be a completed pass remember your receiver also needs to be in balance so if this receiver gets knocked off the table or off the back of the end zone it will be incomplete so you don't want to hit it too hard so if the quarterback flicks and makes contact with the receiver in that case it was a tumble so it wouldn't be a complete pass and it would be second down however if i did go and it connected with the receiver the defenseman just like the kickoff would have to flick and try to tackle me and if he does so, I would be down where I was touched at the 10-yard line. Remember, on a pass play, if the quarterback flicks their helmet and accidentally hits a defensive helmet, it is an interception. So the defense will take possession of the ball, and then they will get a flick to try to advance the ball downfield, in which, just like a kickoff, the offense would need to tackle him now and try to flick and touch him, in which it would be the orange team or the Cleveland Browns ball going this way. The other type of turnover is a fumble. So if a player that has the ball tumbles and does not touch an opposing player, and let's say this helmet tipped over, it would be a fumble and the defense can try to flick within a helmet's length of that player to recover the fumble and then they will get the ball going the opposite way. So this could be from a receiver who caught the ball and advanced and tumbled without touching a defenseman, a running back, or on a kick return. Also, if at any time when the offensive player goes downfield to try to make a reception and the defensive player accidentally touches their helmet when they're trying to block the path, it is pass interference and that would be a first down at the 15 yard line at the spot of the foul in this case. Now I'm going to show you a running play in which you will try to advance the running back, flick down the field to try to gain yards against the opposing team. On offense, you may only ever fit two attacking players that can advance the ball. So that would be receivers, running backs, or have your quarterback active to either run the ball. So if I flick two wide receivers, that means I will not be able to run the ball with this running back because only two attacking players, wide receivers, the quarterback, or the running back here can move the ball down the field. The linemen are not active attacking players because they can't advance the ball. They can't run the ball. So. If I flick this blocker down the field, let's say this is a tight end, I'm going to try to block this edge here, 
and the defenseman again gets a flick. They may flick to try to block this running lane from the running back. Now remember, the defenseman may not cross the line of scrimmage at any time or it is a five yard penalty and the of offense would move up five yards. So then let's say the second move, I'm going to flick this lineman. Now remember, you can't activate the same player twice, so I couldn't flick this tight end again. But let's say I try to flick this player to try to create a running lane for my running back here. And then the defenseman might try to move up even more to try to block that lane for the running back. And now I have one option here with my running back is to run. Now, I have a tight end here that I flicked forward. So he is technically an active receiver. So if I wanted with a quarterback, I could throw it at that tight end since he is technically a receiver. This lineman may not catch a pass because offensive linemen can never advance the ball. However, so my options are to pass to this tight end or I may run with this running back from the position that he is in. So let's say I try to run to the outside here. I might go out of bounds, but I try to advance the ball and my offensive running back is still in play. So the defenseman must make a tackle in which he flicks and he makes contact with me. So I am down around the 20 yard line on a running play. Now you can see where having two running backs would allow you, if you used your two offensive linemen to block, you could now run from either this position or this position because you could activate only two attacking players that can advance the ball at one time. On a running play as well, let's say this offense sent out an offensive lineman to try to block and this defenseman set up a player to try to block that running lane. The running back may also go out for a pass if the offense wanted to change this into a pass, or he may also move laterally along the line to try to get a better position to run from. So now the defenseman might try to block that other lane, and then the running back, now created some more space for himself, will get to try to advance the ball towards down the field. The last type of play is an option play in which the offense may either run or pass depending on the situation. So let's say the offense flicks this receiver downfield to try to get open for a pass and the defenseman tries to block it, but then the offense tries to throw off the defense by sending an offensive lineman down the field to maybe block for this running back next to the quarterback. Then the defense might try to attack that run gap that the offensive player might have. So now the offensive player has two options since they can activate two weapons or uh, offensive players that can advance the ball like receivers or running backs they could throw it to this receiver here or they could run it with their running back here since that's those two activated players that could advance the ball since this receiver did not move so the quarterback might roll out to this position laterally along the line and try to make this pass here or if the running back had a lane they could try to flick down the field to gain yardage if the offensive player scores a touchdown by passing the ball to their receiver which in this case would be a completion because it's made contact in the end zone, they would score a touchdown, which is worth six points. Or if they had a running back, as an example, that ran the ball into the end zone for a touchdown, they would also score six points since he reached the end zone. Remember, your face mask counts as being in the end zone, so this would be a touchdown. However, if your opponent's player was just outside the end zone, that would not be a touchdown. They would be down at the one. After they score a touchdown, you will go for an extra point in which you will flick a helmet towards a field goal, which I will show you right now. When you score in mini helmet fall you have two options. You can take an extra point in which you will attempt to flick a kicking helmet through the uprights to gain one point, or you may run a normal play from the 15 yard line for a two point conversion to get two points instead of one for the extra point. So the extra point, you'll place your hand on this placement disc, which is curved upward, and you're going to try to push back and flick this helmet through the upright to get the extra point. On a normal field goal attempt on fourth down anywhere on the field, you will kick from wherever you are. So you may kick from the 10 yard line if you are closer, or all the way back, maybe even on your opposing half of the field to try to attempt a field goal. So you'll just hold this mat here, you'll place your finger and press down and hopefully flick it through the upright to get that extra point or that field goal. And remember after the field goal, the player that scored would take their helmets and set up for a normal kickoff like I showed you at the beginning and the opposing team would turn receive. Remember each player gets four possessions after four possessions. Whoever has the most points is the winner. If it is a tie we will go to overtime and you, you will have a kickoff starting from the 20 yard line to the 40, the opposing 40, the 20 and finally the goal line until it is sudden death. If a person misses that field goal they lose until a player is left standing. 
Okay guys, that is Mini Helmet Football, and I gotta say, I really, really, really enjoy this game. It is a perfect balance of dexterity and strategy together that just creates a great mixture of fun for the entire family. Anyone can play this game, anyone can flick the helmets, and the mass appeal with all of these different helmets, you can get all 32 NFL teams from their site when you order, so you can really customize it to that ability, and it really ramps up that level of excitement that you're using your own team that you enjoy. Also, flicking the field goal with that helmet works surprisingly well with that just little ramp and you flick it up, you can kick it from all the way across this long field. And the really table presence of this game, taking up the entire field, you're flicking your helmets around, people are gonna walk by and they're gonna be entranced by this game. I could see it being used at parties at home, also tailgating parties at games itself. This is going to go over very well, it's simple to teach, it's easy to play and it's just a load of fun. Contact Todd, the designer. I'm gonna put his name in the description and his email. I will also put the link if you wanna purchase this game. This is awesome. If you are a fan of football, if you are a fan of dexterity games, check this game out. We'll see you next time.